Hello Damn. everybody, welcome to Season 49, second round match between Mordred and his Dark Elves and the Bread Mask and his Dwarves. And uh, in the booth today we've got Dimmy G and of course an absolute expert in this field because he's an elf coach, Purple Chest. Hello. Hello Jim, looking forward to this. Uh, we've got some glorious Dark Elves <laughs> taking on the uh, rather dull and uninspiring Dwarf team uh, that's been put together obviously by someone who uh, has just seen every other Dwarf team and thought, yeah, why not? <laughs> Interesting setup. Yeah, wow, he's just gonna wanna. It's a it's a very nice little anti blitz defense this. No, oh, okay. oh, I wow. slightly prefer the blitzers in the front line so that the tackle's in the back line against the blitz, but mm. And wide blitzes, obviously, it's still not gonna stop. So people can get around the back of it. But elves uh, dark elves not the fastest of the elves. That honor, of course, belongs to the Wood Elves. They're, they're the very, very fastest. I mean, I would have been tempted to have... He hasn't got Juggernaut on his Witch Elves. I'd have been tempted to have these two Blitzers holding the sidelines right with Stan for... But, uh... Yes, I mean, the problem is is that, you know, some Elf coaches will just dodge straight through them on one in nights, you know, which Amazons do all the time, so why shouldn't Elves? True. But, um, I mean, you can put, you know... You could put them right on the line of scrimmage and then a tackle one back. At least one of the stand firms, if not two, are tacklers. So those could have been out on the edges. Yeah, I mean. But then you're losing, you know, some of your mighty blow because that's the problem is that your mighty blow tends to gather the stand firm. Yeah. The, f the funny thing is, of course, now it's not a one in nine to dodge through. It's completely open. So you know, that's yeah. the thing. A lot is a one in nine to dodge through. Perhaps that's harder than nothing. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think you're probably right. Yeah. Fatten. Uh, yeah, Fatten's a pro elf coach, mainly, Sandwich. And, uh, yeah, Tension hey, is, is the bread mask. And people who don't know. He's Canadian. <laughs> but isn't, he, isn't he one of those Frenchy Canadians? French Canadian, yeah. Oui, oui, oui. Here he is in the chat. <laughs> That 1D block they did it for no reason at all. Powered up the 2D to get a removal. Glorious. <laughs> well, like, if he didn't 1D block it, uh, he'd have two rerolls. Or three, three, four rerolls, even. Because uh, he would have got the skull out. Yeah. It's only them and the Amish, isn't it, really? <laughs> Your French Canadians that aren't uh, trying to speak English on the continent of North America. Mm. I mean, I know Mexican exists, but but again, American very very widely spoken down there. Yeah. The Amish have their own language, as of course do the Le Quebecois. Mm. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> Getting flashbacks, Jim. Look at this, a curtain of indestructible Dark Elves ahead of some dwarves. Yeah. Glorious for the Dark Elves. Yeah, this is, is this is Blood Bowl. Oh, liquid Blood Bowl. Uh, this he just dreams into place. Drawing Ooh. that veil, that curtain hmm. of elves across the pitch. Fucking <laughs> curtains. <laughs> Yeah, Mordred, he, he also came through uh, a hell of a first round, and he, he knocked out uh, Cyber Knight's Chaos team, didn't he? So, mm. Oh, which uh, was monstrous, wasn't it? It was pretty terrifying. It, I mean, all the Chaos teams were pretty good this season, and uh, we've got none of them left, so... <laughs> That's wild, isn't it? It is pretty wild. And then uh, Lebred, he did the, uh, was it the 5 plus pass against the undead? Yeah. yeah. With the, uh, yeah, the long bomb, well not long bomb, but the uh, cross field mountain elf classic <laughs> yeah. uh, to score. And then, and then failed to score in overtime and one on kicks. Yeah. Here he is in the second round match getting elves to easily beat. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Isn't it? We, we talk casually about, you know, mounted elves and, you know, dwarves pulling off some elf moves. We never really talk about elves doing a bit of dwarfing, do we, see? <laughs> Clearly showing which the superior race is the one that the other one tries to be sometimes. Yeah. 
it's not so easy as it dwarves against Dells. Like, you know, they can get in the way and stuff, and okay, you've got a lot of tackle and mighty blow, but they can you can't make it more than just two just to get away, and they've got some rerolls, so you can just keep keep dodging one square back and it's I'm a subscriber to Andy Davo, um, because someone gifted it to me and you can't give it back. And um I've heard him reliably tell me that dwarves are overpowered, particularly at around the sort of fourteen to fifteen hundred mark. Um <laughs> So I, I, I worry for this poor Dark Elf coach who can easily dodge out his two or three at-risk elves every turn and form a curtain of elves in front of the Dwarf Assault that maybe he might lose an elf or get clinically bored of how easy his life is. Um, but these are the hazards that elf coaches face every day. I mean, the, the, the big issue is there's no bench for this stealth team. In fact, there's a loner, so it's... Yeah. Like, it is a time bomb. A ticking crock. But only if your delfs get removed. Um, so I think you just take the decision that they're not going to have their armor broken. Yeah. Yep, he needs luminous light armor dice, not soul ref dice. <laughs> And uh, the yeah, the dirty player's not so hot in this, is it either with no bench and uh A V nine fixed skull? Yeah, it's terrible at that. I've got a working theory about Solreth. Have you know the, the original story, the book from which the I Am Legend and Omega Man and those other films was based on? The whole point of it being the legend is that um, the things he's been wiping out, the vampires that the human race has turned into. Are actually are becoming sentient, and they are, he is a legend to them. He is the, the boogeyman that kills them. Mm. And I think Sol has euthanized so many Skaven teams that something within the coding of Blood Bowl 2, <laughs> Skaven teams know that he just hates them and that they will die at his hand, and they will not function for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Great, great theory. <laughs> There's Especially no other way of explaining it. He spends <laughs> three years making 700 rat teams every single season and never bringing them to Chalice because none of them make it past eight games. Because they commit some cardinal sin, like not rolling strength on the first five strength ups or something. <laughs> and he finally takes one to Chalice and just dissolves in a red mist. It's, <laughs> it's... When it had two natties, didn't it? I mean, it was absurdly good. Yeah. It was pretty good, yeah. And actually, he's a good enough coach that if you brought a half baked team that, you know, had suffered a fifth of attrition and had a bit of character to it, he'd have a decent chance in any chalice. Yeah. This is some higher level play from Tom. Yep. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it just. Basing everything constantly and uh, yeah. and, uh the coach, yeah, what you want to not do here is get drawn too much into the, the fight that you're being offered. So, you know, you really want to make sure that you're doing lots of running away and building your building your walls. Your curtains. Your curtains, drawing your curtains, Jim. <laughs> Oh, oh, rolled a one on the yeah. journeyman. It was genius to bring the witch round because uh, now she gets punched. Yeah. It's only one witch, Dimmy. Yeah, but he could have done it the other way round. It's the, it's the blodge one. You know, it's not like there's loads of tackle. Ah, oh, yeah, there is loads of tackle. <laughs> um, and anyway, he also carefully and cleverly. Opened up some trap space on the other side of the field, keeping the witch entirely safe. Yes. Oh, Perry. <laughs> you had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping PC in his curtains thing. <laughs> it's. it's Penamute, it's always been so vaguely, vaguely implied. And that's where it needs to be left. That's where it's amusing. That just the use of the word triggers Jimmy. That's what makes it funny. Because he knows and I know, and most of you know exactly why. And that's why I said it, and he knows that's why I said it, but it's never said. 
That's the genius of that level of sort of comedy, I believe. <laughs> oh, just leave it, mate. Just leave it, mate. Leave it at. Hello, Andy Devo. Thank you very much for the massive raid. Absolutely glorious. Welcome, Andy Devo viewers, to uh, the peak of Blood Bowl here. Uh, we've got elves, of course. P purple chest, famous elf coaches. I am. <laughs> I am, Jim. I don't mind that moniker. I'm known for my elfing and proud. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's a more more well known to be an exclusive elf coach than I. I don't say exclusive. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, thing. eternal heaven would still be hell, wouldn't it? So you need to occasionally mix it up with something else. <laughs> yeah, oh. the occasional thousand games of dwarves help to break up the just the elf monotony. <laughs> just. Just for a bit of variety, but I am mainly and focusing upon elf elf play. Oh, good. That's that's a fair and accurate representation of the state of things. Yeah. So the elves, we've drawn our curtains in front of this dwarven assault. <laughs> They're trying to penetrate our curtains. <laughs> God. <laughs> Slip through for the score. <laughs> yep. It's so this awkward, is the though. base cage, isn't it? Base cage. Yeah, oh, it is. Oh. Yeah. With... Oh, I need to have the chair for And not just a base cage, there's just a guy basing the ball. But there's guard around, so it's. Yeah, there. there's lots of guard around, lots of stand firm to make sure that they can have the hits, but it doesn't get them very far. And you have, finally, I mean, you've got yourself in range, which is excellent from the Dwarven coach. I mean, sad for the Dark Elves, obviously. But look what he's doing, which is successfully drawing them finally into the fight. Oh, oh look at that lovely, lovely elf way through. Oh, proper elf chocolate there. Very unlucky with the one die. <laughs> elf chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's sweet and it's made by elves. I, I don't know how else one would describe it. Maybe he should have done this move before he did the, the hit, right? If he'd done that first and followed, it was just a 2 plus to get through instead of two 3 pluses. But, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. You really didn't want the double skull there. Le double school. He's nearly in, though, isn't he? Just for that one. Yeah. Move. Yeah. 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 Just one more little pushki. Although, oh, he's oh, he didn't fill the square. Yeah, it's okay because he's no, him it's out. fine. He, it's just another push from from this guy. Ah, uh, okay. And we're done. Well, oh, a valiant defense by the glorious dark elves, but uh, not to be. They <laughs> love Filthy little under rats, hobbitses. <laughs> Chubby hobbits yeah. waddle their way home for a 1 0. Yeah. So, no it damage. Pretty close. No damage at all on either side. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? I mean, the elves are the happier, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the elves have got to be pretty happy even though they, even though they got scored on an 8. They've taken no damage. So, they're ready to dacker and then uh, win in overtime, aren't they? It, it's quite high on the list of frustrations, though, for us elves, is that <laughs> even if you outplay the dwarves, you're just not coming away with many SPP, are you? Or in this format, you know, it's not you're not going to have an easy another half because the, the dwarves they stay, don't they? Like yeah. a like a stallion at stud, they stay. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I believe stallions at stud stay very briefly, like nan like seconds. <laughs> Maybe because they use a machine. And yet they've never built that machine for humans, have they? Just goes to show. <laughs> or at least not that you can buy on the open market. Um, are we setting up for a one till we can't, can we? It's three stand firms. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no chance to riot. And maybe he's getting <laughs> a mighty blow hit. Or a blitz. Blitz. Absolutely zero effect. 
Yes, but it does on the coach. You, don't you resent slightly blitzes when you've had to set back? Yeah, yeah, that's where most of my blitzes happen, is on the turn eight. But... Yeah, of course it is. Mm. It's the only time it's funny. Yep. Mm. And he's a valuable player, so put him with LOS. I wonder and if he'll I go for a foul. Slightly odd that the least valuable was the one in the centre. Yeah. Which, in case of pushes and things, is the one you would want to be the most valuable. And also, if he was going to foul, which he shouldn't. That looks like he is. He might. If he yeah. was going to foul, is the one that would have the least number of assists on it. Because, of course, with them all stand firm, there's a dwarf either side. You just get to five assists as a maximum. I mean, if you got a plus. He's only gone and got him. He's That's going to send off for it. Yeah. The apples work, so he just. He just screwed himself a bit there, put himself down to 10. <laughs> yeah, and of course the dwarves had a 12th anyway, didn't they? Yeah. So chipping one of limited value, though there is, you know, another half to go before overtime. Maybe it could tell in the end. And the bomber's on. Or oh, is he going to swap around? He's on. Oh, he's the LOS too, isn't he? Yeah, 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 he's just. Our post gone now, you can have a bit of boomer. Yeah, that's okay. He might, he might be able to throw a bomb. Like, he's basically worse than Longbeard, isn't he? Because he doesn't have tackle. Yeah. But, See, um, what, I don't, what I don't get is that when you knock him over, why doesn't he blow up? Because the same reason you can sit on a nuclear rocket, but if it's not primed and dropped, it doesn't explode. It's by well, presumably using the steampunk tech of Blood Bowl era, there is a way of keeping things safe. But obviously it's because it's cartoon-like. For a bit of fun. <laughs> I mean, renting a lime beard for an extra bit of bench is 100k. Renting Boomer or Barrack, both of them are terrible. Oh, um, another it, proper blitz defence as well. With an altar is only, what, 10k and 50 or 60 without? 60, I believe. Yeah. And they just tend not to punch that kind of weight. Well, here we go. Oh, that's a Here lower. we go, indeed. Really? Surely a Daka. Not a full Daka. No, it's, it's iffy. <clears throat> Especially with the free plus pickup. But I mean, this is this is uh, far enough away that it'd be a GFIs to hit them. So I, can, I think that's. Okay, no, it's less okay. But it's kind of. Yeah. Okay. I guess he's got to uh, re-roll the pickup anyway. Yeah. Yeah, would have picked that up. Funny, mm. however. I just guess all of these dwarfs go forward exactly four square or three squares. Yeah, so they're going to go as far as they can. So, yeah, this is a weird little midfield dacker, isn't it? It's just not a Dakar. I mean, it kind of is. He is it? He ran everyone away. He didn't make any worse books and he ran everybody away. So it's... He just didn't run them very far away. <laughs> if you'd move them all four more squares, it would be a Dakar, wouldn't it? Yeah. I agree with that. So now next turn, you can just move them all, you know, six back and it becomes a proper Dakar. I mean, the, the real question is, does he throw the bomb? Oh, God, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, wow. Maybe he should have done. Disappoint him. I think it was free there. Blah, blah, blodger. 
Does he try and go through? He's got no, uh, he's got no guard, has he, the uh, elves? And as an elf yeah. coach, it's really bad not having any guard. If you can get even one gym, it completely changes things. Um, it can really protect the ball. A one well-placed guard can totally alter how people assault your ball carrier. Uh, and, of course, you know, in attack yourself on their ball cage, it's just so easy when you can put a guard in and get three, perhaps even four Dark Elves right up in their faces using that guard as the leverage. Mm. Oh, he's gone really for the stamp nice hammer as well. Yeah. That was uh, risky, wasn't it? But gets the gets the stun. Oh, he's going to get punched a lot. That he is. It's the full pow. <laughs> yeah, first time was all about protecting the pickup, absolutely. And he was right to because he had to re roll it as well. But it just meant that he was in an iffy spot because. We're we going through here? Uh, I guess you try the one D. Yeah, it looks like we're going through. I was. Yeah, I don't know. 136. Choose! Oh. Even worse that it's with the Rackle. Yeah, yeah, and it was. Yeah, it was like. It was rough because, like, it was rough that it was going to be a 1 into a 1, but I mean, it, those two 1 deers totally clean through, doesn't it? So, like. Mm hmm. It was worth going for, I think. I just don't see how he's going to break through. Now he hasn't broken through then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that was the right thing. You can even hit the ball here. He can, yeah. Could well, he could have done it if he powered then. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sorry. I mean, he could just throw throw a bomb at it. <laughs> Tear in my throat. I just um, was um, chewing. Mm. It's a lovely swizzle sack. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Is he gonna lob? He's gonna lob the bomb. Why not? I mean, I thought it was more gonna be there for fouling. I'll be honest. Ah, uh, boo! I mean, I was doing an extended skit earlier, obviously, about how you shouldn't really be throwing bombs against elves. No, because it's not it, particularly just effective. Fumble it and knock yeah. over his whole screen, yeah. Exactly. There are places where you can get use out of it, and particularly on defense is when you do want the bomber against Camry, against orcs, against other dwarves. But against elves, as Dimmy said, you're as likely to blow yourself up as you are, blow up anything useful to you. And you certainly can't risk doing it early in the turn, which means if you do it later in the turn, <coughs> even if you blow up the ball carrier, they'll just pick it up again and bugger off. With it. Oh wow, what happened there? Did, did he just instantly fail something? Yeah, he just rolled a one yeah. and re-roll it. Do you reckon he's mentally checked out? Or? Maybe, yeah. Might be, these dwarves are absolutely monstering him right now. I mean, he should surely... have it, shouldn't he? Oh, he's only got, he's only got one re-roll. Yeah, but it's, surely... he loses by not re-rolling it, so... Yeah. <laughs> The right move was the first thing you do when you're in that situation is you run away with the ball. Yeah. And then yeah. you wait until you get all your other elves back. And then yeah. at least you can stand them all up on the same turn, giving the dwarves too many targets. But instead he just sort of seems to paralyse with fear and... Yeah, it's probably frustration on that, right? Because he, he, yeah. he had a great breakthrough turn and then just double skulled, so he probably was just like, oh, fuck this shit. Yeah. And it is Tom Shinnis as well, who's the luckiest man in Blood Bowl. Really? Another one? He is, yeah. <laughs> he diced me to a draw once, Jim. Wow, look at that. You must be really lucky to draw against you. Mm. I had like three Chaos Beastmen left. <laughs> They've sacked it, now they just need to grab it. Yeah. Got it. Wow. Gone. Oh! Oh! And gets the pun off. 
I mean, this is the dark elf drive, isn't it? So it's not like it's not yeah. that good that he's got the ball sack. No. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Uh, however, given other available options, that'll do fine. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's about as good as he could have hoped for at the start of the term, right? Well, yeah. you say that. That's not great. <laughs> uh, no, it's not it's less than ideal, but new elves will arise to take their place. Oh, doing a PC. Could have robbed it then. Was it a beautiful elf play? I think I missed it, Jim. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just a GFI. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of a beautiful elf play being a PC. <laughs> but no, it's a dwarf GFI, sorry. Almost over. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I I saw what he was trying to do there, you know, to shuffle the dwarves around and get what he wanted. Yeah, he wanted it. But actually, what he also managed to do was shuffle all the dark elves out of the dwarf pack, where they can easily dodge away and run towards the ball, which I didn't think was ideal. He's had mm. horrendous dice this half as well. Yeah. Yeah. Or dread. Yep. Correct. Indeed, indeed. On se relève ou le coach te remplacera. Ripperu. Yes, it's all. It's almost over. It's not a hundred percent over. It's uh ninety. The same percentage of the natives of North America that wish to speak American <laughs> or English. Uh, but yes. Le Quebecois Triumph. <laughs> Not a hundred percent, but yeah, almost certainly done. Oh, there's another one go. Un des fruits les plus mortels qui soit. Pourtant, son horrible goût devrait nous mettre en garde. But like every elf team, Jim, they've all been the winners. If it is a win, it's not just the people that score. Everyone else has played their part by getting hit by dwarves. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh man. Cast. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Even if the miracle happens and he scores, it's still grim. Yeah. And we all know that miracle is not happening. Correct. Oh, mm. bit of adversity for Tom there, like using a reroll. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Oh, no, it's just again. I couldn't reach the ball. He is the scoring threat, though. Yeah, he hasn't got a score on threat, and he's losing one now. So, if you can knock this guy down and blitz him, his tension is. Wait. No, this is the scoring threat. You bamboozled me, Dimmy. What, the, 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 the obvious scoring threat that was basing the ball? Yeah, you bamboozled me. You said he needs a scoring threat, though. So then he moved a guy here, so I was like, oh, this is the scoring threat. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. It's dwarves, mate. Yeah, this is it. This is GG. Stop your very will to live. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do, don't they? Flipping dwarves. Nobody's taking a, making a plushie of a troll slayer and taking it to bear with them, are they? Well, some might. <laughs> there you go. There you go. 
GG. G flipping G. Mm. Le red mask. Tom Schnees. Ha 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 ha. Wee wee wee. Le plim plim. Well, another example of those overpowered little dwarfs. <laughs> Just dominating the game. Yeah. I mean, like, to be fair, the Dark Elves were looking a little bit thin. Well, yeah, this is a pretty nice draw for the Dark Are you body shaming the entire team? Is that. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> oh. It must have been like I can't I can't remember, but it must have been quite a bit of damage against the chaos. Yeah. Right. Well, there you go. Um, you've got to wrap this up now. Be starting to go to bed. Um, congratulations, Tom Schnitz, hey. Lebred Mask. Commiserations, Mordred. Um, great game. Thank you so much, Dimmy and PC. Absolutely glorious. I should, Jim. I think the quality's been quite high today. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts, Dimrath? Uh, not really, no. Amazons will never win, Chalice. And thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.